بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله وشكر الله just a quick one had an interesting um, chat with uh, one of our clients today and this idea came up of body mind and soul and then body mind and spirit and this is something that I've been banging on about for quite a while is that not only are we limited to body mind and soul we are a body mind soul and spirit what a lot of people you know and it's no fault of their own um, but then again also you know in the Quran itself the soul is uh, interchangeably used between the nafs and the ruh so that's that but according to the dictionaries there is a subtle difference between the soul and the spirit so you have the body, which is our jism. We have the faculty of the mind. We have the faculty of the heart. We have then the presence of our nafs, our desires, our ego. And that's something that's extremely important uh, part of our existence. Because without it, we would not have the desire to eat or to look after ourselves or to um, protect ourselves, our property, uh, to procreate. Not, none of that would be there. So the nafs is is essential but the danger of the nafs is when it goes out of control when there is no limit set upon it and this is why the purification of the nafs or the purification of the soul is so important so that all forms what we see now what is it that actually brings us to life and keeps us alive is the electric current within the body and that electric current alhamdulillah is supplied by the ruh the spirit when i pass away it is a spirit that is removed from my body. The body remains, the heart remains, the mind remains. All of these things stay, but the ruh is removed from my body. So if you were to see your body as a, um, a, a toy, okay, the moment you put a battery in it, it lights up, it makes sounds, it's able to move. And without the battery, your body is nothing. And that battery is a spirit. Now, the thing that I was saying, body, mind or soul, because what's happening is, as Muslims, we're lead, reading a lot of, uh, we're being exposed to a lot of material online and through books um, regarding Western spirituality, or at least an understanding of what the West thinks spirituality is. And subhanAllah, we leave our deen and we run onto the other side so that we can get enlightened. And they feed us the concept of body, mind and soul. Our deen, through the studying of tasawwuf, Sufism, spirituality, Islamic spirituality, talks about the body, mind, nafs, the soul, and the ruh. Ultimately, it's about the ruh. Why? Because it is the spirit that returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you remove God out of the equation, you have body, mind, soul. When you include Allah in the equation, you have body, mind, soul, and then the spirit, which is the cherry on top. And what we really, really need to understand here is when in our deen, a person practices spirituality, the more spiritual they become, the less they have a need and desire for dunya and what it contains. So there is less need for money, there is less need for fame, there is less need for property and cars and all the rest of it. But on the opposite side, Western spirituality, in the absence of God, you can clearly see that there is body, mind and nafs. Why? Because as they get more spiritual, they find new and more ways of making more and more money out of you. Come to this course, come to that course, come and do this and come and do that program. Let's go on this spiritual retreat and let's do this and get you more spiritual, but pay us more. And these spiritual gurus become richer and richer and have their own private islands and private jets and private cars and private everything. This is not spirituality. This is nafsaniya. Okay, this is nafsiyat. This is, this is far away from the concept of ruhaniya. Our Islam teaches us zuhud, abstinence, living of little. But Western 
spirituality in the absence of God. Okay, whether it's Western or whether it's Eastern, whatever. But in the absence of God, we are only filling our desires. So I hope, inshallah, this message makes sense because it is so important to understand that subtle difference. And the biggest trick of the nafs, the biggest trick of the nafs is to make you believe that it and the ruh are one. And they are not. The nafs is separate. It's desires that calls you to everything. And the ruh is something that is aligned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wants only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please understand the difference. Let's not get washed away with all this modern spirituality and trying to become spiritual because it is such a shame. Such a shame that we being Muslim are selling our souls in this. We're selling our beings in this. We want to have moon ceremonies and this ceremonies and full moon and eclipse ceremony. Where in our deen is this? Why do you have to fit into a system that brings you down? That wipes away your spirituality? On one hand, you want to do your salah and do your dhikr. On the other side, you want to dance around and prance about on the beach with people that you're not supposed to mix with. It's ajeeb, isn't it? Body, mind, soul. Godless. Body, mind, soul, spirit. There's something there. And the beautiful thing is, spirituality, when you understand it clearly, is not an easy ride. It's not something, oh, and it's not just sitting there in the lotus position. Struggling on a day-to-day -day basis of earning a halal income, of lowering your gaze, of not listening to rubbish, of not engaging in things that do not concern you. This is spirituality. Spirituality is not something sweet. It is difficult. And so, subhanallah, when you think you're oh, feeling so spiritual, but doing all absolute bogus stuff, this is not spirituality. This is istidraj. Okay, you're just being driven by your nafs here. So please understand the subtle difference. Find Allah. Come back to Allah. Your spirituality is found in the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. In the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you find spirituality. Because when you truly become spiritual, the world and everything that it contains has no desire attached to it for you. You, don't, you no longer want the bigger car. You no longer want the bigger house. You'd rather just give it away. You see other people suffering. But the opposite side of spirituality, they just want your money. They want more and more of it. And they want to build their own empires within it. So may Allah give us that tawfiq. May Allah give us that understanding. May Allah give us the ability to truly submit to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and not run after these facades and marketing ploys that are just washing our iman away. Jazakumullah khair. Sorry for the rant. Assalamu alaikum.